Kenya has experienced a digital revolution over the past few decades, becoming a technological leader not only here in the region but the rest of Africa. Well, this week we are talking to the Principal Secretary in the State Department for Information, Communication and Technology as well as the Digital Economy Engineer John Tanuwe. We are going to explore the achievements over the last few decades and of course the upcoming Connected Kenya Summit which is happening next week in Diani, Kuala County. Thank you very much Engineer for joining us here. Thank uh, you Brian. Can you first of all probably maybe give us an overview of uh, the ICT and digital economy industry? The ICT industry and uh, digital economy is quite vibrant in our country and even the region. Uh, we have many players in this uh, sector. Uh, players means the operators who uh, enable the digital and the ICT infrastructure. We have also the various uh, stakeholders, the users. So it's quite a very vibrant industry that has many players. And as a sector, as a government, we are looking at how to grow this sector further by looking at the infrastructure that we have, how to enhance the digital connectivity, how to enable our users access the broadband, whether from their homes or through the devices or the fixed uh, network at homes, and now to allow them to enjoy the services on top, which is now the digital economy component. Mm -hmm. um, what we should we look forward for in the component of digital economy? When we look, when we talk about digital economy, we're talking about digital space. And the uh, digital space means online. When we talk about online, we're talking about e-commerce. We're talking about digital jobs. We're talking about online services by both government and private sector. Mm -hmm. And that is the component of uh, digital economy. And you can see this area is growing quite uh, fast. And there is a, 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 a matcher between the actually the digital space and the creative economy. And you are seeing uh, new digital products like animations, gaming, film, and many other products that are consumed locally here, but are created anywhere across the world. And also the same is going to happen that you can create products here in Kenya mm -hmm. and can be consumed anywhere in the world. And that is the nature of the new uh, space of the digital economy. Mm -hmm. And of course, you know, Kenya has a reputation around the world as uh, the pioneer of mobile money. And, and we also have a reputation in Africa as the pioneers of um, crowdsourcing platforms. And we lead in that front. Um, what more innovation should we look forward for? The country has made quite significant progress um, in uh, development of new innovations. Uh, we are very proud as a country for a product like M-Pesa, which actually pioneered what now we call the financial uh, fintech. And there are many other beyond that. We have people who have developed other wallets beyond M-Pesa. We have also a very vibrant banking se sector with uh, good mobile uh, platforms now you are able to transact uh, from your phone on your banking uh, and be able to uh, do that at the comfort of your home when you look at now our academic institutions the universities the tvets these are potential platforms enabling our people to develop skills uh, that are enabling them now to explore this space even further. So when you look at what is potential in uh, this space is the growth of startups. Because for startups to grow, you're looking at uh, the talent that we have from academic institutions. We are looking at the infrastructure that we have built across the country. We are looking at the innovation activities that are going on. We look at the innovation challenges that has opened in this country over the years and the many tech companies that has come out of Kenya. We are looking going forward that this sector is going to be very potential to grow. Uh, further. Uh, new solutions which were deployed like Haslafan yeah. of a digital platform is going to be a big enabler 
in this sector. We are talking about the coming um, micro loans, the startup, uh, the startup uh, fund. So this is an interesting space to watch. And Kenya, when you look at uh, uh, investment in the startups, the FDI that we are able to attract even to the startups within the country is quite encouraging. So it's a very potential uh, space. Mm -hmm. and, and, and President Dr. William Ruto has been very categorical that um, you know ICT and digital economy are going to be catalyst for economic uh, development. How are you working with other state actors as well as non-state actors to ensure there is growth in this industry? Yeah, it's true. When the government um, came into place, this government, they identified five key sectors which uh, are primed to actually transform the country. The first being agriculture. We're looking at the SME and the cooperatives. We're looking at the uh, healthcare. We're looking at also housing and more importantly now the digital economy and the creative sector and the digital economy and the ICT will be an enabler and driver of the other key sectors by facilitating services in those sectors to bring efficiency to ensure um, uh, the, there is uh, fast access to services we are working on bringing uh, government services online. We are in, uh, ensuring that a citizen can access uh, government services from the comfort of their homes. And you can see uh, even the recent registration of farmers enabling uh, farmers access fertilizers. So ICT is not only on its own standing, but an enabler for all the other sector. So going forward, ICT will be also an enabler for connectivity because we would want to connect uh, the country to global opportunities. Mm -hmm. When we talk about the 100,000 kilometers of additional fiber and connecting to already what we are because we have currently uh, about 25,000 kilometers of fiber by public sector and we have about 33,000 by the private sector. Adding additional connectivity will be actually a huge transformation for the country because we are going to provide connectivity to the last mile. That means to our world level, to small centers across our country. This will be quite impactful because now we'll be able to ensure our schools are connected. We'll be able to ensure that our hospitals are connected. We'll also be able to ensure that the markets across the country, about 25,000 of them are connected with fiber. Mm -hmm. The potential it will create across the country is now that anyone from the uh, anywhere in the country will be able to access any information they need first we want to use this to be able to access skills learning last year december during chamuri day there was a number of programs launched in partnership with many other stakeholders key of them is digital skills training and we were able to get uh, fully funded trainings that Kenyans could go online and learn about digital skills how to transact in the digital space how to make money how to create new skills that you are able to offer services to anyone across the world that's the first part that we we we, we work on secondly now we're looking at how to access the global opportunities for digital work because the future of work and many of us will be able to earn our living by working online remotely from home and uh, whether within the country or working for any entity or company across the world so this digital infrastructure we are going to put in place is also to open opportunities for our people to access jobs across the world mm -hmm. We're looking at also like the Wi-Fi we want to put in the 25,000 markets and public stages across the country. This will open a new platform that beyond having a physical stall of a market of selling your products, you are able now to move and have an equivalent in the virtual space. And this will be a huge transformation for our country. It will open opportunities for one market to connect to the other market in a digital way. It will might start in a simple way that it's still sending pictures, shooting even simple applications like WhatsApp. Mm. But the transformation we are looking at there is that there is opportunity for e-commerce platforms. 
that will be developed to connect one market to another, one county to another, and even regional. And this will be a huge transformation in our country because we will be able now to open a bigger market to our people. We'll be able to access information. If you have products, you know where to source them. You know where there is higher demand. Or you know where there is um, uh, the, the, the supply and demand would be much uh, faster. And it will create more jobs for people, whether it's in logistics or new applications that can be developed on top of that uh, e-commerce platforms mm -hmm. yeah. and, and I'm glad that you're infusing the concept of uh, the public um, uh, uh, Wi-Fi hotspots and uh, deepening commerce uh, within that space and we know that um, you know in Africa Kenya is a, is a leader when it comes to e-commerce um, how do we plan to ensure that uh, you know the mama bogas of this world the border board riders the small scale traders you know are upskilled uh, with digital uh, skills to ensure that uh, they become participants in this industry we've developed what we call the digital master plan and in this digital master plan we've actually mapped out what we need as a country to transform and move into the digital uh, space and reap the benefits of it. Uh, one of them is actually uh, digital skills training. And when you talk about digital skills training, we're talking about for not only the experts, you need, of course, those who will be able to develop codings, uh, do coding and be able to develop applications, be able to uh, develop new softwares, but also you have users the trainings that will enable uh, basic um, usage of um, softwares uh, uh, to be able to transact in the digital space. We have initiated a number of programs and ICT Authority will be also uh, working as per the digital master plan to ensure we target at least 20 million Kenyans to be able to have digital skills to enable them to transact on the basic transactions that uh, are required. Mm -hmm. We have a very youthful population, so it's not really uh, difficult. With the current um, uh, exposures that has happened so far, this is a quick uh, uh, progression that will need to be uh, done within the country. We are also looking at how to leverage on our institutions like the Tibet institutions, which now we are running a number of programs to ensure now we build the next level of skills that will enable them to access uh, probably uh, better uh, digital jobs from across the world. So the digital skills component will touch from Mamamboka all the way to even public servants and officers who are the digital experts now because as we go online we need uh, systems that are able to support uh, the country's digital platform and we also need to upskill our technical uh, uh, teams in the government we need to address the challenges that come with the uh, issues of data protection data privacy we need to address the issue of cyber security so the skill level training will come from the very basics to advanced level mm -hmm. and i know that um, and you talked about these um you know the digital master plan the the 10-year digital master plan um you know it has a component of uh, upskilling and reskilling of um you know the public service which is also very critical in uh, service delivery um can you share with us some insight in regard to that so we, we've initiated a number of programs and we have many partners who are willing to work with us. We've had uh, previous partners who have worked with us, even currently Mastercard, Mastercard Foundation uh, through the program called Achira, has enabled a skilling of over 1.2 million Kenyans on digital skills and online job work. We are also in discussions with uh, UNDP to see how we can now establish programs for uh, digital skills for public sector to ensure that the public sector officials and staff are able to uh, take advantage of the digital space because if we are going to move uh, towards a paperless government we need a very uh, capable team and uh, expose to the necessary tools and skills to be able to uh, operate in that paperless environment. And also we are building a digital government. That means services will be offered 
through a digital platform and the engagement with the users will be through the digital uh, platform. So there will be quite a number of training programs that we will do within the government. Others will be done by our training partners through our institutions and we are also engaging our um, technology partners. Uh, we are very reliable technology partners in the country. They have set up, uh, set up very strong bases here. We have Microsoft, we have Google, and all these players also have established training. And there are huge uh, number of uh, training programs available online that even Kenyans can go and take, and some are actually available at no cost. It just needs one to avail themselves, learn, and equip them uh, themselves with their digital skills. Mm -hmm. yeah. And talking about digital skills, um, they, I know as a government um, the, you've rolled out uh, the digital literacy program and also last year we saw Kenya becoming one of the few African countries um, to, 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 to roll out what uh, we call computer coding you know in, 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 in schools. Uh, how significant are these development? It's, it's quite significant because um, Many actually, we, we miss the first industrial revolution, the second industrial revolution. Now the fourth industrial revolution, we as a country must prepare ourselves. And uh, there's quite a lot being done by various actors within Ministry of Education to ensure that coding is actually institutionalized in our academic institutions. There are also many private uh, players who are already uh, have programs available for even as uh, young children to be able to expose to coding and logic, which is actually related to the digital space, mm -hmm. so that they have this exposure to prepare themselves to um, the work environment of the future, and also for creation of tools that are required in the digital space, because the tools in the digital space will be also tools that you need uh, advanced uh, digital skills to be able to develop. Mm -hmm. So coding as a program is, is quite significant and Kenya uh, making this stride towards institutionalizing coding as part of academic programs will enable our country uh, move and catch up fast with those who have, uh, uh, have, have done ahead of us like India and some East Asian countries who are already actually leading and transforming their countries. Mm -hmm. And talk, talking about the transformation of a country, and we know for sure that in the last um, 20 years, you know, Kenya has deployed significant resources in the development of our ICT infrastructure. Uh, when you look at mobile penetration in this country, uh, we're talking about over 120 percentage. When we're talking about um, uh, uh, a coverage of um, mobile phone, uh, you have about 93 percent uh, 3G and uh, the rest being 4G. But the world is now moving to 5G technology, which we launched um, last year as well, in 2021 actually. Um, what do we plan to do to accelerate uh, uh, the deployment of 5G technology in the country? We've made great progress as a country, as you have enumerated. Um, from the days when the first uh, submarine cable landed in Kenya, uh, 3G, 4G, and recently fiber to our homes, uh, we're looking forward now for new technologies, uh, 5G. And uh, it's not just about communicating that you're able to. We are looking at how can we use now technologies like 5G to advance, advance our industrial sector, to address our logistics uh, issues, uh, things like clearance in our boats, how can it bring efficiency, how can it reduce time in which uh, certain processes are being, uh, are being done. So as a country, we're looking forward how these uh, the new technologies can actually bring better efficiency in uh, our transactions and even lower cost of uh, transactions and uh, movement of our goods. 
But uh, it's not just about 5G. We're looking at how new technologies can help us. Artificial intelligence, uh, the uh, uh, robotics, and many other new technologies, and how it can support our city lives. We've seen how um, some solutions, smart city solutions, like even um, uh, smart city uh, solutions can bring safety to our cities, uh, cameras, and, and many other such new solutions. So we are looking forward on how, as a country, we facilitate the private sector and all the other players through policies, regulations, to ensure that we enable the country to take advantage of any useful technology that can bring value to our people. Mm -hmm. yeah. And when you look at um, the, the Connected Kenya Summit, you know, which has become a critical component in the growth of ICT industry in this country in the last 12 years, um, we have seen major innovations coming out of uh, the Connected Kenya Summit. Uh, how is this platform being primed to become uh, a center or to become a platform of more innovations going forward? So Connected Summit is one of our most events in the ICT sector. It's that event that brings all of us in the ICT sector to discuss the journey we've made as a country. We also review uh, lessons learned over the period and also we bring all the key stakeholders together to map the future. ICT Authority has run this event for a number of years. I think this is the 13th year and uh, it is going to be our platform as a country that we actually share also as a government some of the things we have done. Some of the programs we have currently under the Kenya Kwanzaa program and Ministry of ICT, uh, like the digital superhighway, digitalization of government uh, services and processes, uh, our uh, ambition to grow the e-commerce and entire digital economy. These are things we will be able to share and also get feed feedback from the various stakeholders on how we can move forward. Uh, and talking about digitalization of um, government services, um, we know that um, s a lot of information and in government services um, have gone online, whereby people now, you don't have to go to government offices to access uh, services like application of uh, passport, uh, uh, birth certificate, and so much. And I know the president has pronounced himself on this issue, saying that um, the plan is to fully automate government services. Uh, do we have a roadmap to this? We have a clear roadmap. When we started uh, working on this from December last year, uh, November, December, we had over about 350 services online. As of now, we have over 4,300 uh, services online. Uh, about over 3,000 uh, are fully online from start to end. A few are still under some process, but we've identified over 5,000 services in total that will be automated. And we are very confident these 5,000 services will be uh, automated by the end of June uh, this year. But this is just the beginning. June this year? Yes. Uh, we still. Yes, two, three months we, we're making good progress. Yeah. Uh, really, from two, 350 to over uh, 2,700 fully automated, others partially op uh, uh, automated in total, fully automated and partially op uh, automated is about 4,300. And we are confident by the end of June, 5,000 services will be automated. Mm. But this is just the beginning because we're still looking at the entire government uh, systems. For us to achieve a fully digital government, there's quite a lot of work we still need to do. We still need to look at our revenue system. We need to look at our land administration systems. We're also looking at uh, even the health systems, working with our colleagues in those uh, ministries to see how we can bring technology to enable uh, those services to be offered more effectively and more efficiently. We are also uh, looking at um, building a digital country. So once we have a digital government, 
and we are able to also automate what uh, operates government itself internally, whether it's our procurement systems, whether it's our document management system, so that we can be able to achieve a paperless government. Because that's one of the objectives is how do we achieve a paperless government? We only use paper when it's really necessary and we take advantage of digital. It will reduce our cost, it will improve the transparency and it will also um, make our country more effective and we'll be able to access more, more, more data, real data, and uh, data is such a valuable thing. So in addition to digital government, paperless government, we're looking also at how we can manage our data and how we can work with um, cloud infrastructure uh, providers that they can host some of this infrastructure here in the country and taking advantage of the renewable energy we have as a country, how can we be an exporter of data that other countries can actually use the data uh, build up in our country to store their data, to process their data and make our country a, a data hub. Mm. Um, Government automating its services is one thing, and of course, um, the public being aware of the digitalized services and accessing them you know, from our digital platforms is another thing. Uh, today, if you still go to many government offices, you still find the public queuing to access services uh, uh, which they can actually access from their phones. Uh, what kind of campaigns uh, have we rolled out to ensure that the public is well sensitized on how, how to access government services online? So I think quite a lot has been done in respect to awareness. Uh, we have Uduma centers, which is under our other government agencies, and they are able to engage the public physically in the Utuma centers. But also there, they are able to get information about the platforms, because once you reach there, they can support you to access the digital platform and you can now transact. We are going to do more awareness, and uh, if you visit the e-citizen platform, you are able to see the number of services that are now available on online have increased. And uh, we are going to uh, uh, communicate this through the various agencies, the various government uh, organs that are actually offering those uh, services. And uh, we can see uh, from December the number of transactions online have actually increased. Uh. You see, when, and I know this is a subject that um, you know, you've been very passionate about, you know, the development of smart cities in this country. And I know um, you qualify to be termed as uh, one of the pioneers of uh, the Konza Technopolis. You've, you've, you've seen the development of the city. Um, can you give us a brief background on where we are now in terms of uh, the development of uh, the Konza city, which is going to be, which is expected to catapult this country into the categories of smart city countries? Uh, um, Konza Technopolis is also one of the state agencies under our Ministry of uh, the State Department of ICT and Digital Economy. We have ICT Authority, Konza Technopolis, uh, Office of the Data Commissioner. And so Konza Technopolis is one of the key projects in our ministry that we want to see that it actually continues to grow. Mm -hmm. um, Konza as a concept was well conceptualized. We have had uh, designs done and uh, we moved to the design to construction and the basic infrastructure are now shaping up. And the uh, next phase for CONSA is to see uh, attraction of investors. We want to see the population to grow. Currently about 3,000 people uh, operate from CONSA, uh, either as working as laborers or as the staff of CONSA Technopolis. Over so 3,000. Over 3,000 mm. uh, in total, those people. But we're looking at now how the National Data uh, Center at CONSA Technopolis can move to the next level to be able to be the digital platform for our country and enable the digitization that we are talking about. We are looking at the um, university, the case that we are establishing at CONSA to start admitting its first students towards the end of this year or early next year. And that will be able to now drive CONSA to the next level. 
and also now to attract investors, whether it's in manufacturing, whether it is in uh, business process outsourcing, and that is the main area that we think we need to grow, is how to attract business processing uh, operators to this country, and also IT-enabled services. So Konza is on track and is progressing uh, quite well. How do you plan to use uh, the upcoming Connected Kenya Summit to create a synergies between the public and the private sector in the development of smart cities and, of course, as well as the innovation of smart technologies? The Connected Summit provides a forum that we can communicate our progress and also communicate opportunities that we have uh, put at Konsa Technopolis and the entire um, ICT sector because within the Ministry of ICT we are also building this infrastructure. We are enhancing our connectivity. It's also a huge opportunity for the private sector through the process uh, we can do the PPP process. We have also direct investment. We have many other players who are within the sector. We want to share these opportunities through the Connected Summit and we see that these opportunities are a fail to both the private, public and also global players who are interested to grow this sector. Mm -hmm. So um, I, I know you are working with the county government uh, because um, they are also the drivers of economic development, economic and social development at the micro, at the, at the ma micro level. So how are you working with the county governments to ensure that um, ICT and digital econ economy becomes a way of life even at the county levels? The county governments are very critical to the digitalization agenda and to the growth of the digital economy in our country. As we build infrastructure, we are working very closely with the digital uh, the, the county government because every uh, place in this country belongs to a county. And so as we build the infrastructure, whether it's the park bond, whether it's metro infrastructure, whether it's even last mile, we work with the counties. So we are working very closely with the counties in building the infrastructure. We have also projects, specific projects that are supporting counties. We have a project called Last Mile uh, County Connectivity Project. And this project enables counties to have uh, the, their offices uh, provided with the local area networks, which enables them to have internet. We are also able to provide them with a unified communication system that they are able to call each other. So we are working also enabling county governments to be able to have effective communication in their offices and also connect to the rest of the government. Through the NOFP uh, infrastructure also, we are providing the internet to the county uh, government. And when you look at the bigger scale again about digitalization, digitizing and uh, taking, uh, making uh, government services online, it's not only at the national government, we also want to ensure that all the services offered by government, whether it's national government or county government, the citizen can access them online. And we have a very good support with the county government. This week, we've held meetings with the Council of Governors, with the chairman and the members of the ICT committee to see that we work as one as national government and the county government. We've also held meetings with the CECs of ICT from all the county governments and really to ensure that as government we work as one and to ensure that we have actually well aligned, that we are aligned in respect to what exactly we want to do and ensure that we also um, have synergy in what we are doing because we are serving the same citizen. So if it's efficiency we want to bring to the citizen, if it's opportunities of jobs we want to bring to the citizens, it's the same citizens from the national government mm. and the county government. Projects like Onsa Technopolis sits on the three counties, Machakos, Makweni, and Kachiado. Also, we are working with the, cons uh, the, the, the Council of Governors uh, Office, uh, the CEO, to ensure that we work with those counties to ensure there is order, there is also management of the buffer zone, and also ICT authority. As it builds infrastructure across the country, they have to work with each and each of the specific county governments. Mm -hmm. yeah. And 
You see, when you look at the Connected Kenya, you know, summit itself, you know, the platform, mm. you know, has become well established. It has come of age. It's a concept that can even stand on its own. And this is just a typical case of what can be achieved if the public and the private sector are to come together and agree to work together. Uh, are we exploring the opportunities of creating other platforms like uh, Connected Kenya Summit? Connected Summit has actually brought the public and the private sector. And there's a lot of achievement uh, that has been achieved. Many programs to like the Presidential Digital Talent Program is one initiative also that came out, out of the Connected. And there are many other initiatives that has come out of Connected and are tracing uh, common issues in the industry. And I, I see Connected uh, growing to be a more regional event. We have had discussions with our regional colleagues from the neighboring countries who are interested to be part of this discussion. And some of the things we are discussing with them is about connectivity. It is not enough to be connected as one country. We have to look at how are we connected to our neighbors because beyond the physical infrastructure like road, the digital connectivity can actually bring even quicker and faster integration in the region, can give more values to the country. So we are looking at the connected summit expanding, becoming a continental event. So instead of even having many other events similar to the Connected Summit, we are looking at how Connected Summit can actually grow to be a continental uh, event. Mm -hmm. uh, who are some of the players you are working with to realize this dream? We have the technology uh, solution providers who are in this country, the global tech firms, our partners who are participating, uh, sponsors, and uh, we have our telcos, we have uh, several uh, government agencies, ministries. So we have a whole, uh, the whole uh, sector actually being part of the Connected Summit uh, this year. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I know you have been very passionate in the past um, uh, of, about uh, Connected Summit and uh, I can even still tell that uh, you still have the passion for this event. What are you looking forward for in uh, the, the Connected Kenya Summit 2023? I'm looking forward to this summit giving us a platform to chart the way forward for the next five years. We have clear objectives as a government. We have clear objectives that has been set uh, based on the plan that we have. But it's important that we get the feedback from the industry on how we can create synergy and alignment and ensure we can move faster. We want to see how we can grow our economy using ICT. We want to see how we can attract new jobs to our country through this sector. We want to see how ICT can bring more efficiency to the other sectors of the economy. We want to see how ICT can also enable uh, growth in the SMEs. SMEs presents a very good opportunity for our country to create employment. And so ICT is a huge enabler to that sector. We are also looking at how we can enable the sector of agriculture. So I'm looking forward having conversations. We have people from those sectors who will be speaking and will be listening to get feedback from them and be able to integrate their feedback into our programs to ensure that the objectives we have set to realize within these next five years, we can be able to inbuilt into our plans. Mm -hmm. yeah. What is your message to the people who are planning to come to this event? I ask them to join uh, this event from 2nd to 5th of March. This is 2nd to 5th of April. This is a very important event that brings all of us in the ICT sector together and we are all connected. It doesn't matter which sector you are in, the Connected Summit 2023 is the place to be. Come and share with us, come and share your progress, the things you have been doing uh, and, and, and your expectation 
of our input as ICT ministry and also the other stakeholders on how they can support you achieve your goals. Very well. Anything else? I think this uh, connected uh, summit also is very important because for the previous years we've had challenges when COVID came, so we've not had uh, sessions like this where we are connected. So it's quite an opportunity that we are building post-COVID that we are able now to reconnect. And lessons from COVID showed that high CT is so integral and so important for us in all the sectors, whether uh, you are in agriculture, manufacturing, the role and importance of ICT is critical. So welcome to Connected uh, Summit 2023. Let's come and connect and build our country together. Very good. Engineer Tanui, thank you very much indeed for joining us and of course for sharing with us your insight. Your time is highly appreciated and we look forward to seeing you at uh, the 2023 Connected Kenya Summit. Thank you, Brian. Very good. I mean, we have been having this conversation around ICT, how to deepen ICT on, uh, uh, in, in our daily lives and, of course, the upcoming uh, Connected Kenya Summit 2023. And I just want to tell you this. The hotels are getting full quickly. And if you haven't booked your flight to go to Diani, time is really running out. The biggest ICT event is happening next week. In Diani. You cannot afford to miss the Connecticut Kenya uh, 2023. My name is O'Brien Kimani. Thank you very much indeed for your time. You're watching KBC Channel 1. Thank you for your time.